Looking to take your financial knowledge to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to Ask Ralph. Offering accounting, technical, and financial advice. Whether you're looking to save taxes or improve your business, he's got you covered. Here's your host of Ask Ralph, Ralph Eastup Jr. Welcome back to the Ask Ralph Show. Today I thought I'd talk a little bit about a new area that we've seen some increase in exposure to, and that is tax preparer fraud. What am I talking about here? Well, there's been a whole new cottage industry created for those people who want to try to make money by being fraudulent tax preparers. And I thought I would spend a few minutes talking about this today and kind of give you some ideas of what to keep an eye out for. Now, there was an article that ran on the MSNBC website. It was at um, 15th of March, 2018, by a woman by the name of Lori Konish. And the title of this article is, Your Tax Preparer Could Be a Fraud. Here's how to find out before it's too late. And this is something that is very apropos for this time of year as more and more people are getting to the realization that tax time is just around the corner. So you really want to take a look at this. And, you know, there's some topics here or some items here we should talk about. You know, if you're in a rush to file your taxes here, don't forget to watch out for fraudulent tax repairs. You know, and what one of the big things you'll see here is that these tax repairs who will lure you in with the promise of big refunds, you know, and that's because what they're going to do is they're going to make up deductions. And I see this sometimes in my practice where I'll take over a client that's been working with someone else. And I I look at the deductions and I go, wow, do you realize what this, you know, this tax repair did for you in the past? And, and most times the response from the client is, oh yeah, no, I just, I give them numbers and, you know, then I go pick up my return and it's usually all set and, and I'm happy that. And what I try to explain to clients is, you know, you're responsible for the tax return that's filed. You know, you're actually the one signing the return. So if, you know, you get this great refund and then turn around and maybe pay this preparer a high fee for this interesting, you know, use of the tax code. And then the IRS later comes back and assesses you, you know, you're going to be on the hook for that. You know, they note in this article that one Texas man recently pled guilty to filing false tax returns and aggravated identity theft, which had led to almost a $400,000 tax loss. So this is no joke. I mean, this is stuff that is really going on. So it's something to be on the lookout for. And, you know, one of the things you want to look at, like I said, the big one is, you know, promises of large returns, you know, you really large refunds, you know, if if someone's coming across saying to you, you know, hey, I'm going to get you a huge refund, you know, there's no way they can tell that without looking at your tax documents and see what's going on, you know, and you know, one of the things you can look at is the IRS puts out a list called the, the IRS dirty dozen, which is a list of the most prominent tax scams, you know, which a lot of times affect low income people and the elderly. And, you know, that's, you know, one of the things they talk about here is that, you know, one sign of tax payer will inflate your return or getting paid based on the percentage of your refund. And that is a completely unethical thing for a tax preparer to do. You know, that's something we don't do. You know, if you've got a tax preparer saying, hey, you know what, the bigger refund you get, the bigger fee I'm taking, you know, run away right then. Because that is absolutely, you know, no, no, no way that anybody who's credible is going to be doing that. You know, the so-called tax professionals will often beef up your returns by attempting to cheat the system. You're not cheating anybody but yourself because they're going to come after you, not the taxpayer. Now, that not, that's not to say that the IRS won't come after the tax preparer because they will in many cases. You know, that's where I see a lot of audits happening is the the IRS will step up their enforcement and go after the individual tax preparers. And then, you know, what they'll do is they'll pull all their client files and actually go after the individuals. You know, so that, you know, one of the big ones they mention here, and, and I agree with this, is that, you know, I see a lot of these uh, fraudulent or, you know, iffy tax repairs taking, um, you know, big deductions for, you know, for people who are commuting back and forth to work. Now, that's going to be eliminated quite a bit with the change to the new tax code, uh, as I talked about in another show, uh, with the change of the miscellaneous itemized deductions. But, you know, that's a big deal. You know, you'll see people taking, you know, 16,000 uh, miles for driving to work. And I say, wait a second, you know, you can't deduct the 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 driving to and from your regular work. Now, one of the big things to look out for is false or misleading uh, credentials. Now, by law, every person who prepares tax returns in the United States has to have what's called a preparer identification number or a P10. Now, one of the things you can definitely do is you can go to the IRS website and you can look up your tax preparer and see if they have a valid P10. You know, that's where you can go and check. And, you know, if if they're not listed in there, you know, that, that means that they definitely should not be preparing taxes. Now, that's not to say that everybody listed and listed in there is being endorsed by the IRS. You know, as the IRS says here, this is just as simple as confirming that the person truly does exist and they are registered with 
with the IRS. You know, there's a difference between being listed with the IRS and being qualified. And that's why a lot of times I'll talk about, you know, just because someone says they're a tax preparer doesn't mean that they are educated and have the correct, you know, inform or the correct, you know, experience to prepare taxes. And that's why you want to look for somebody that's, you know, a CPA, a public accountant, an enrolled agent, uh, somebody who has, you know, licensing with either the state or with the IRS. That's very important too. You know, the other thing you want to watch out for, and this one's kind of funny when I read this, is, you know, watch out for the tax repairs that, uh, you know, work out of temporary pop-up shops. You know, one of the things I, I mention to my clients all the time is, look, you know, after April 15th or April 17th this year, you know, you'll still find me here in my office. You know, and that's a big deal. You know, if, if you see somebody's here today, gone tomorrow, you know, that that's really not a good sign. You know, th that's really bad a bad deal here, you know. Again, another one that I, and I really hadn't seen this much, but there are some tax repairs out there requesting that you have your tax refund directly deposited to their account, and then they'll turn around and cut you a check or give you the cash for your refund. That's one you want to stay away from as well. That's unethical as well. You know, and if you're asked to sign a tax return, it's incomplete. You know, do not do it. That's another thing. You know, when, when we present a tax return to a client, that tax return needs to be completed. In fact, one of the things that we added to our, you know, disclosures this year is that, you know, we've taken the time to, to go over your return and it makes sense. And, you know, we're not just making up numbers. And a lot of times my clients will chuckle and say, Rafa, why are you putting this on there? Because I want you to understand that this is a return that you own. You know, when you sign those documents, that tax return or that e-file form, for the federal and for the state, you know, this is a legal binding contract. You're taking responsibility for every item on that return. So, you know, the, the idea of an excuse saying, well, you know, I just drop off that stuff to the, to the tax repair and then they call me and let me know when the return's ready. And I hear that time and time again, it's just not a good thing. You know, you want to make sure, you know, that you go over these things uh, and, you know, make sure you're reviewing them. And there's a, there's a notice here uh, in this article by Craig Smalley, an enrolled agent in accounting and financial service firm in Orlando, Florida says he offers all of his clients a free half hour review of their returns at only about 20% of them take him up on the offer. Um, and that, that's sad to me, you know, and what he goes on to say is always review a return because you don't know what's on it before you sign it. You, you have to know that, you know, and that's something you absolutely need to look at. You know, if you have a, a tax return preparer that says, you know, I'll just go ahead and take care of this for you. Go ahead and sign these papers now. You know, you'll probably get about the same refund that you got last year. Again, that's one to, to really watch out for because, you know, that's going to end up biting you in the long run. And like I said before, they, they're not going to come after the tax preparer for the money. They're going to come after them for, you know, for, for being a tax cheat or for, you know, perpetrating, you know, one of these dirty dozen tax scams. But the person who's going to pay is going to be the taxpayer who signed this return and said, yeah, I attest to this. You know, so these are the things you really want to be careful of. So t to reiterate, you know, watch out for those who are who are promising really large refunds. Watch out for those who have, you know, false or misleading credentials. Like, for example, if somebody says, you know, they're endorsed by the Internal Revenue Service, you know, that it this doesn't happen. And like I said, with the other, you know, warning signs, watch out for those ones that are, you know, the pop-up uh, tax preparers that are here today and gone tomorrow. And I hope this is really helpful to, to keep you out of, you know, any problems looking for a tax preparer. You've been listening to Ask Ralph, brought to you by Sazio Accounting Plus. Please subscribe to and write our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. Our podcast is produced by Carolyn Peters. Thank you for listening and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Ask Ralph Media. You can also hear me each week on 1450 WILM and on 1410 WDOV in Delaware and on the iHeartRadio app. Submit your questions or ideas for future shows by sending an email to Ask Ralph at AskRalph.com. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Sagio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered.